Vice Chair Qualls, do, do you agree with the conclusion of the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission that in the years leading up to the crisis compensation and bonus practices at big banks that too often rewarded short-term gains, big bets, and encouraged senior executives to greenlight irresponsible risk-taking? Uh, yes, I don't have uh, sort of uh, in my immediate short-term memory all of the reasoning behind that, but I agree with that statement. Okay. I do. Um, in a speech last month, the New York Fed President Dudley said, quote, an effective regulatory regime and comprehensive supervision are not sufficient. We also need to focus on the incentives facing banks and their employees. After all, misaligned incentives contributed greatly to the financial crisis and continue to affect bank conduct and behavior. Most recently, we saw this very problem exposed at Wells Fargo. Uh, the former CEO and the head of the community bank division were raking in bonuses while their employees were churning out millions of unauthorized accounts. Section 956 of Dodd-Frank requires bank regulators to prohibit incentive-based compensation practices that reward senior executives for irresponsible risk-taking. Regulators issued a proposal in May of 2016, but nearly two years later, nothing has been finalized. In the meantime, Wall Street bonuses jumped 17% in 2017 to an estimated $184,220,000, the most since 2006. When uh, you were asked about this rulemaking in January, uh, you said, quote, I don't have any updates on that for you. It's not something that I have talked to the other regulators about yet, uh, close quote. So today I'm asking you, uh, how is it that you have had time to revisit capital rules, revisit leverage rules, revisit the Volcker rule, all of which were finalized after years of deliberation, public comments, and input from other regulators, and you have not had time to finish the incentive-based compensation rulemaking for the first time. Uh, I, that is something that is uh, on the agenda, but it is uh, uh, not something that I have a time frame for you on today. Well, it, it, you revisited a whole host of already existing rules, but a rule that is actually part of a requirement of the law has not even been visited. And it's on the agenda, you tell me, but you can't give me a time frame. Well, I think that's pretty outrageous. When, when is, what, can you give me some sense of a time frame? Uh, not of a specific time frame, but I can tell you that I do think that that is uh, an important issue and it's something that we, we will be discussing. President Dudley thought a key way of addressing a big bank culture of recidivism was through changing compensation arrangements. In contrast, when you were asked about, big, uh, about bank culture, you said it is, quote, perhaps not impossible, but very difficult for a financial supervisor to come up with useful, predictable interventions, close quote. Isn't changing compensation precisely how you can address bank culture? Uh, ad addressing the culture of an organization is uh, one of the most important things for an organization, uh, but an extremely uh, complex matter uh, that involves a variety of different uh, incentives. Uh, it's something that is most appropriate and ought to be a very high priority for uh, the management of an institution. It's something that's a very high priority for me uh, at the Federal Reserve or with our own culture. Well, it is a very high priority for the Congress. They put it into law. And I, I don't see how you are all uh, seeking to follow the law. Well, we, and, we and are working on, on implementing that. It's, it has not fallen behind the refrigerator and been forgotten about. Well, I, I can assure you it won't be going behind the refrigerator because I'm going to remind you of it and others uh, about it as we go ahead. Finally, I know there's significant interest by this administration in offering a proposal to make changes to the Community Reinvestment Act. I'm not opposed to modernization when 97 percent of banks receive satisfactory outstanding ratings, but yet African American and Latino families continue to be disproportionately denied mortgage loans even when controlling for income, loan amount, and location, we've got a real problem on our hands. Now, I have, however, real concerns that new proposals will lead to weakened enforcement by regulators and discounted importance on physical bank branches. Do you expect the Federal Reserve will join the OCC's forthcoming proposed rulemaking? 
We are working on that as a joint matter, so I expect that that will be issued as a joint uh, proposal. The Treasury, if I may, Mr. Chairman, the Treasury report issued earlier this month recommends that the Federal Reserve adopt the OCC's new policy allowing banks with failing CRA ratings to merge or expand so long as they can demonstrate a potential benefit. Do you anticipate the Federal Reserve will adopt this policy? Uh, we have not considered that policy as a board, so I don't want to prejudge the judgment uh, of my uh, fellow governors. Uh, but I think that it's important to note that what the Treasury is saying there is that if a benefit on that particular, uh, in that particular area, in the service of uh, uh, middle income and lower income communities can be demonstrated from a, a particular application, uh, that the whole picture should be taken into account, and that seems reasonable to me. I have other questions, but I'll submit them for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.